Today my talk is about the visual field index. It is a new global index that can calculate the rate of glaucoma progression and also it helps staging of the amount of glaucoma damage. Before that, we used to depend on the mean deviation to know about the rate of progression and to stage the glaucoma. But the problem is the mean deviation can be affected by the development of cataract. In this example, the visual field index was recorded over five times. Then a regression line is drawn. Once you have this regression line, you can predict what's going to happen in the next five years. And also you can know if the regression line is steep, then the patient is at risk of losing good quality of life. Before proceeding, I need to remind you about the total deviation and the pattern deviation. The total deviation, here are the data of the patient recorded. Then each location is compared with the normative data of that age, and, it, and any difference is shown up here. So this point is below average by five, while this point is better than average with one, and this point is the same as the average normal age. And this is the graphic probability plot of the total deviation. So the total deviation is the difference between the measured threshold of each individual test location and the age-corrected normal value for that location. What about pattern deviation? Pattern deviation is a way to get rid of the effect of media of pasty like cataract. To understand this, let's have this example. Suppose we get a group of st students underwent an exam, and these are the marks of this group of students. The best mark was 29, the least was 2%. We arranged them from the highest to the lowest. And we believe that the marks are very low because there was a couple of difficult questions in this exam. So we want to adjust these numbers to get rid of the effect of these difficult questions. We came to this way to do it. We go to previous exams for average students, and these are the number of one of the exams. This is the highest and this is the lowest, arranged from top to the bottom. Then we go to the location 85% and compare the present groups with the average and see what is the difference, and this difference will be added. So in this example, we are going to add 70% for all these numbers. We are going to adjust all these numbers up by 70%. Imagine that the value here was 100. Then if this is the case, we were, we were going to subtract 6% of all these numbers. So simply we compare the value here with that. And the difference is either added up or down depending on the sign. This is what will happen with the visual field. This is our patient, and these are the sensitivities recorded all over, arranged from the highest to the lowest. And this is the normal average. We go to the location 85% and compare. In this example, our patient is in this location is below than the average with three decibels. So we are going to add plus three to all these numbers. We're going to adjust these numbers by adding plus three to get rid of the effect of the media opacity, like to get rid of the effect of the difficult questions in the exam. This is what's known as the adjusted threshold and how it is done. Imagine this point, the value was 27. If this is the case, we're going to subtract 2 from all these numbers. So it is adjustment either up or down. 
depending on the difference in the values and the location, 85% compared to the normal. So, in our example, after adjustment, you see this point, we add one to it, it becomes 28. 28 compared to the normal, so the difference, it is four decibels below the normal. So this is the, these are adjusted up, and this is the new result. And this is the graphic probability plot of the pattern deviation. So the pattern deviation, it is the difference between the adjusted threshold of each individual test location and the age corrected normal value of that location. Now, back to the visual field index. I'm going to discuss how it is calculated, what is at its advantage over the mean deviation, and when we know the calculation, we will see that when we reach to the level of minus 20 decibel, then the calculation will be different, and I'm going to discuss what will be the effect of that. The visual field index is less affected by cataract, and also it is more sensitive to changes near the center of the field. To reduce the effect of cataract, the visual field index disregards reduction in sensitivity unless they are associated with the pattern deviation probability outside normal limits. Locations at which deviation are within the 95 percentile of the healthy observers, these locations are treated as normal and are assigned to a value 100%. So, all these locations are assigned to be 100%. While these two locations get a value of zero, then they will be assigned by 0%. Now the remaining, these dots, here the calculation will start. The value, the decibel here after adjustment will be used and changed into percentage. Suppose this point get a value of 20%, 20 decibels, and its normal is 30 decibels. So the 20 decibels represent 66% of the total. So all these values will change into percentage when compared to the normal. Now we have all these points changed into percentage, either 100% or 0% or something in between. If we calculate all these points and divide it by the total number, then we're going to have one value that represents the visual field index. So the below normal threshold values are identified by the pattern deviation map, and they are changed into percentage and are included in the calculation. The visual field index can be in the range of 100%, this is a normal visual field, down to 0%, this is in the perimetrically blind field. But before doing this, there will be some adjustment of the percentages. Locations here in the center will be multiplied by 3.29. Next rank will be multiplied by 1.28. Next rank will be multiplied by 0.7. Next rank will be multiplied by 0.5. Then next rank will be multiplied by 0.4. So in that way, we're going to raise the values here, and we're going to lower the values here. These percentages were based on publications that estimate the special magnification present in the occipital. We know that 
The central 10 degrees of the visual field occupies roughly half of the primary visual cortex. This is known as the cortical magnification. So small area here is occupied by large area here in the visual cortex. You can notice here to stimulate a, tar a target size of number three in the central area, you need 230 ganglion cells. If you go more peripheral, just 35 ganglion cells, more and more peripheral, just 10 ganglion cells to stimulate the same size. Also, if you have a defect of three decibels, the percentage of ganglion cells lost in the central area will be 70% of the ganglion cells are lost, while in the periphery, it will be 44% lost. So whenever you have damage here in the central part, this means a large number of ganglion cells have been damaged compared to those in the periphery. So for this adjustment, the percentages used in the visual field index, the central part is multiplied by three or something, while the periphery is multiplied by half. This is going to happen as long as the mean deviation of the field is better than minus 20. Why is that? As long as the field is better than minus 20, this means that the position 85% is not affected. But if the field damage is more and more, Till the general field is depressed than minus 20. In this case, the location 85% will be also affected, and this will result in a fraction of the value or the validity of the pattern deviation. So as long as the mean deviation is less than 20, we depend the calculation depend on the pattern deviation. But once we cross the minus 20, the calculation is no longer can depend on the pattern deviation because the pattern deviation now is not accurate and the calculation will be shifted to be dependent on the total deviation. But on such a shift, there will be sudden decline of the progression and this decline can be in the value of three to 33 percent. This will give us a false impression of progression of glaucoma. Let's see this, this example. Here, the field was a little bit better than minus 20, and here slightly worse than minus 20. Notice the difference in the visual field index once we cross the 20 line. Suddenly, it looks as if the visual field index dropped 15%, indicating false progression of glaucoma. Now, for the classification of glaucoma, for each one decibel in the mean deviation, we're going to have 3% change in the visual field index. In this paper, then for around 550 persons, this is the correlation between the values of the mean deviation and of the visual field index. Thank you for your attention.